Hi right, everyone, welcome along. So we're going to look again, aren't we, at this, the next phase of kind of our data cleanse. And this is one that we built a couple of years ago now. And I've spent, every now and again, I kind of dip in and go, oh, is there a better way of doing this? Could we do it in a better way? And I'll be honest, probably yeah. But, and this is, I think, the most important part, because this is what we were talking about, wasn't it, a couple of weeks ago, when we were looking at the building our Atlas Power App, where we just used the native functionality of SharePoint to fix the Borough lookup for for our um, bike data. Now, for the New York water towers, what we've got is we've got, it's a, a manual form that someone's filling in, isn't it? And it's got then a case of, well, who are you filling in? Who's carried out the inspection? And that's put in. And because it's manual, we've got all sorts of, of invalid entries or entries that, you know, actually, when you look at it, they, it, they mean the same thing as here, you know. Likewise, for the lab that's used to test the water, now, initially, I thought, well, what do we do to fix this? We've got a beautiful spreadsheet, and we'll go through a bit what the spreadsheet does. And to be honest with you, it's probably like the most efficient way of doing it. So all I've really done to make this, like, you know, to improve it as part of our continual improvement side is to make sure that what we've got now is um, the ability for it to email out and send off to people, which then allows it to be run automatically so we can trigger runs automatically and then it'll send an update out people saying well these need to be remediated against whereas our original solution somebody had to manually go and trigger it and run the refresh not ideal so we've made progress haven't we but again we're not using a power app for it and the more i was looking at writing a power app for it it was just going to take it wouldn't take well it would be easy enough to write the power app and the issues came in terms of because of all the complexity that's been put into it, the maintenance management of that power app just makes it like it's an unnecessary expense you'd be adding into a business. So I think this solution works. So let's go through, break it down and see exactly what it's doing. So here we are, over in SharePoint. So let's open this one up. Let's have a look. I'm going to open it up in Shape in my Excel. So what we've got in our spreadsheet here, okay, is we've got now a new table that I've added. Right? And what it's going to do is it's going to send this table out to us when we've done the update. So we've got it's going to open up, run the refresh, and then send this table to us, which tells us how many things we need to fix. So we've got in the inspected by, we can see there's 30 entries that need to be fixed. Bear in mind, I haven't done this in over a year. That's not a huge number, is it? That's kind of like, we can live with that. So that's an easy one to do. In terms of what we've got going through, if we look at the inspected by, where we've got these blanks, these are the 30 that we need to fix, okay? And you can see here, this is a classic thing. So because Power Query is case sensitive, if you've got differences in casing, like we have here, this alky, alkaline plumbing ink, and alkaline plumbing ink, just spelt with diff, one with two capitals in the, in the ink, it treats it as two separate things. So what we would need to do is to fix that and say, well, these two would be the same thing, wouldn't they? So what we would do is we would come here and we'd say, like, we can see this alkene plumbing ink is already in. And this was one of the things that just makes sense with keeping it in Excel. You know, if we were to put this in a power app, we'd need to write a drop down that would refresh based on things. So you could quickly and easily do that and then have the option of inserting new rows into the drop down that could then be refreshed, which is complexity that you're adding layers and layers and layers of complexity into something. So we've got that. Okay. We can see like these are probably the American Python. American Pipe and Tank Lining Company, I would guess. Yeah, so we can see, we can go through, we can do these, and based on if there's a new entry, we would just type it in. And because Excel has autocomplete functionality, they're all there for you to pick in the future. Okay, so we get everything starting to fall into place really quickly and really easily here. And workflow wise, all I have to do is go open there, look at what needs to be tweaked. The idea being, if we go back to the tested, 
that you end up with something like this, where we've got a list of the values on the left that have come back through, and we've got then the normalized or the fixed versions of that. So what does that look like in terms of in Power Query within our file? Okay, so Power Query side for this. So what we're doing, effectively, we've got a source, okay? And our initial source is, we just call it rows, which is, this is really the direct query connection to our source file from New York. So we're going directly to New York to read in that web file to come through, okay? So that's pretty basic. If we look at the source of that, lost me mouse. Where's my mouse gone? If we look at the source, we can see it's just a CSV file that we're getting from a website, okay? So we download the CSV file, promoting the headers, that's then our base table that we're gonna use. In terms of our tested by, for example, and we do the same for the other one, what we're then doing is we're saying, well, let's go and read in that. We're gonna remove all the other columns, just keep the tested by, so the lab name in this case, remove the duplicates, and then the clever bit happens. You see, we switch this source too. So now what we do is reading in the table that we've got already in the Excel spreadsheet. And then we merge the two together. But really what you're doing, if we look at the merge step, is we're doing a left outer. Okay, so all from the first and just the ones matching it from the second. And the first one, remember, that's our Excel, isn't it? So that's our, sorry, not Excel, that's our um, CSV file source that we've pulled through. Okay, and then the beauty of Power Query within Excel is it effectively you're writing that table back based on what's been completed. So you're kind of going, go and get the new, bring them in and update the table. It's all that's happening. Right? And because of the way that's done and then you expand it back through, it keeps it all together. So what we end up with is back where we started from. Okay, and that then gets written back to it. And it allows it to then add new rows as they appear. So that's brilliant for doing that. And the issue that we've always had is, well, to get that to work, you need to go in and open it up, don't you? So what I've done is I've written a really simple macro, nothing, really, nothing clever. Yeah, it's really simple. I mean, just telling it, refresh all. Right, run a refresh all. Okay, because we've got a refresh all, all we can, what we can do next is we can actually trigger a Power Automate script. Okay, so the Power Automate script will go, it'll trigger the macro, and then it'll email stuff out to us. So what does that look like? I hear you say. Okay, so we've got this Power Automate desktop script now. Okay, now Power Automate Desktop is different from Power Automate. Power Automate Desktop runs in the desktop context or on the computer, so the computer has to be on. We can trigger it though, we can call it from the cloud. So we can say with a normal Power Automate script, run this Power Automate Desktop script. So in theory, we could put this running on a VM or something like that, and it would then go through, run the refresh, and everything's good and hunky-dory. Easy enough to do. The way this works is it's you kind of tell it what you want to do. So we're starting here with the launch Excel. So we're going to open Excel, telling it to go and run, open the right spreadsheet. We're going to run the macro. We're going to wait 30 seconds because there's, there's not really a way to tell it to wait while the macro runs. So I'm saying 30 seconds, hit and miss with that. You could do some timings. I think it's around 15 or so seconds. So we're kind of just doubling that out and allowing it. Um, we're then opening and getting the table range of the lookups where we counted how many blank rows there were. And then we're going to read in that thing. So we actually go at the range, how big's the table, because I made a table for it. So in case it changes or something happens or we expand or do something with that table in the future, it'll automatically expand. It's then going to send that or read that in and then use open Outlook and then send out, send using Outlook the file so that's easy even easier so it'll send that and then it just closes them both 
So what we've got is we've got then the whole Power Automate script is now written, everything's functional, this is automated now. Effectively. This spreadsheet will come through, it will be automatically updated. Everything's only going to save it back and then everything will be picked up and brought into our report pack. Okay, so the automation of this has just gone to the next level, hasn't it? We've just gone, we've dealt with the issue that we had and that was the burning issue that was driving us and we need to push this into something like Power Apps where we can actually trigger and send something else to people, either through Teams or do some sort of an automation with it. We've now done the automation using Power Automate Desktop and been able to really leverage everything we need without having to go through and do what was going to become a really complicated power up because you wanted it to be able to look up because we need to standardize the values. It's really important, as we can see behind here. Look at this ambient group ink. How many different versions of that have we got? Okay, we've got loads. And that's then one of those challenges that you've got all the time is what's the best way to deal with it and how do you prevent more inaccuracies creeping through? Like, is the way I've spelt it there right necessary? I don't know. Yeah, you know, might probably not. And in terms of in the app side, in terms of the Power BI side, what we're doing is we're saying if there's nothing there, use the version that came through from the file. So for our our now 27 or so that need validation, because remember it's 30 initially, now we've fixed a few. It, it won't pick those up. It's going to say, well, there's, there's nothing to do. Um, so for those 27, what it would say is, I'll just use the value that we that came through. So at least they, they will appear in the report pack as, a, as an additional entry. The issue would be that we wouldn't necessarily know about that extra one or two tests that, that were all that or yeah, things that that person was involved with or that company was involved with. It's not ideal, it really is not ideal because as you give that more and more time, that gap grows. And like I say, I haven't done this in a year. So this we could run, have it triggered to run every Monday, say. Um, we could do it as a cloud flow running when I'm expected to be in the office and it would then run on my laptop and do that. Or I could have it triggered to say, well, you know, when you first power on your laptop on a Monday morning, do this first and it'll run through and do it. Okay, there's options there for me to work through and make that work. As I say, or we could even put it on a VM or you know, a cloud data flow, so not cloud data flow, or a, a cloud PC, something like that would work. Okay, so all of that capability has delivered up something automated. It's quick, it's easy. So the point of this is always gonna be, isn't it? Trying to get these maps in a good order trying to make it so that we've now got the capability of actually checking and seeing, well, which company, you know, where did Ambient Group actually assess? We can now do that. So what we're going to do is we'll build that whole report pack and we'll fold that into our main model. And we've suddenly pushed another example of a continual improvement option and how you can continually evolve and grow your Power BI data sets. So what do you reckon then? What we've got with this is something, a solution that was built a couple of years ago now. And for me, the very fact that something written two years ago is still working and something that frankly was put together as a bit of a stopgap has worked. Um, the upgrade of that or the changing of that to a better solution, it, there isn't really a better solution for it. What, it's, what, need, what is needed is kind of the exact functionality that Excel has, um, but we needed a couple of bells and whistles in terms of getting the Power Automate side dovetailed in so it would all work. We've done that now. And what we've now got is something that can be scheduled to run at a certain time that sends an email to me um, saying, this is what the outstanding items are. So you kind of sit and thinking, well, what, what more am I looking to really deliver with everything? And that's where we get to with these. As we start to implement solutions that work and work well, you find that they kind of, well, you know, it's dealt with the issue. The, the fix is a, a really quite small. And in terms of the fix size of doing a, a Power Automate desktop script to do it, it was rename a file, so that's going to be remap. Um, the Power BI desktop report to look at the right thing, and then that will be pushed through into the model. 
that's kind of basic really isn't it um it it's just gonna deal with everything and it'll keep working so you know again the idea of saying well we're going to put power apps on these is it's just kind of fallen a bit by the wayside because the solution that we've got today is the right solution and it's it's again i think there's a real lesson there that we need to remember that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should you know we want to keep things as simple as possible and keeping things simple makes them easier to maintain and manage going forward and you might look and you might say oh but you've got a power on my desktop script here you've got this there and that's true and those are a layer of complexity that could be annoying if we only have one or two of them in our whole estate but if we went through and built the power be the power app to do everything we would need to have a data set for it so that would either go in as a sharepoint list or we could do so or sorry microsoft list now or we could use um dataverse to host those tables that's fine so those two tables of data there need to be maintained and managed but it's the point of the app so the app would do that the app would then need to be able to look at a second list probably to actually say well these are the values to pick from for here and then we have to we'd have to have a sub form within the app to allow you to add a new one that the current options didn't match it to then refresh that and refresh the, the, the whole parent list as well and it becomes layers of complexity and variables and, and lists or um, arrays that you're holding within your, your power app it, it's it, it rapidly just becomes oh this is really complicated whereas excel is just kind of there you've got a column value we can start typing comes up with something that roughly fits or you go oh and this doesn't fit at all you can search the column if you're really not sure what it is which one's closest to it and you start to find what you need so it's kind of it, it's all there and what was missing was that automation piece that we've now closed the loop on with that power automate desktop script so you know it, it, there's a lot there to unpack and i mean this is something that i've seen in terms of the examples of this, this is something we see regularly with clients. So ERP systems where you've had you know many years, if not decades, of use, and you then have like clients who, for whatever reason, they've merged. They're now well, this these three companies now this one company, or you know this one company. Well, these addresses for this one company are now the second company because of the way they've changed, and you need to then dovetail it through so that when you're looking at who are our customers, what's going on you get a proper view of what the customers are doing for you likewise for your suppliers you might be doing the same for your suppliers it all is there and historically these things are always a problem so what we tend to find is we kind of rock up with a client we've got here's our list of our spreadsheet that we go and we update these and it's just the exceptionals that they have this will work with the exceptionals because we just go well these are all the same this is unique unique to unique oh this needs work and it goes through it, it's a solution that's simple enough and elegant enough that it can just be used and if we're thinking well in terms of our business is going to run the main report pack once a month for example we can run that we get this we can fix it off it goes and we run that against the line of business data so that would come through with what's out of band or out of place this month or the current month as we're going through it to then say right we know it's fixed so when we look at the prior month reporting everything's already fixed it's done and if you get to the point of saying that can you imagine the quarter end or year end everything's already done it's just done because it's really simple to stay on top of it and make sense of it but this is one of those things that you, there's not going to be a solution that's globally applicable this is going to be a use case by use case plan and what you need to do really as a, as a data professional is kind of come up with what's my arsenal of kit that I can bring to this kind of data cleansing world. And we've looked at some normalization pieces really with this, haven't we? Normalization extension pieces. And we've shown that those toolkits are there. They are simple. They are not expensive to do. These aren't, you know, these aren't additional licenses that you're having to go out and buy. These aren't huge additional skill sets you need to grow. These are deliberately simplistic ones that you can kind of implement and run in your business. And they will save you money because, well, you're not paying for it, but also because they're, they, once they're done once, they keep 
being done and they can keep being used and you're not having to go and recompile a list every year, every month, every quarter, or you know, copy and paste it and then download the latest data, validate that list. It's all embedded in whatever the tool is. So you're kind of sitting there thinking, well, it's been much easier to do it, or this well, it doesn't get much easier to do than this. But you know, what am I to who, who am I to say anything? So let me know down below what you think, what your experiences are of doing things like this. You know, does this make sense? Is a good way of doing things? You know, I mean, I know we're supposed to be trying to get rid of Excel, but this is a prime example of where Excel is just the right tool for the job. You know, it's not a case of saying we want to get rid of Excel. It's a case of saying we need to use the right tool for the right job. So let us know down below. If you think, you know, you guys are really good at what you're doing. Can you please give us some help, give us some advice? You know, drop us a line, office at joyconsulting.co.uk. Happy to arrange a call, happy to help you, and we'll help steer you in the right direction so that you can get the most out of everything that you're doing. For now, though, stay safe, take care, ta-da.